our vision is, is, is very simple, very, very simple. We give you more uh, from the world you see. Uh, more could be content, more could be happiness, more could be sometimes rubbish as well. But we, we basically give you more uh, from the world you see. But before I dive, uh, any, dive any deeper, it'll be good to give you a flavor of three core principles what we're trying to build and where the world is going in the field of artificial intelligence. What are the core pillars uh, defining it? So the pillar number one uh, is very simple. It's almost biological. Uh, it's, it's our eyes. Our eyes is the, our primary sensor in the human body. 83% uh, of our cognition, learning, knowledge, growing up as kids comes from this primary sensor. Uh, and I don't have to explain to you how eyes work. We all know how eyes work. But if you take that same analogy of the eyes and you apply it to devices, today the most used organ of the human body, which is outside of the human body, is a mobile phone. Uh, and, and already we can see the most used part of the mobile phone today is the camera. Today there is a trillion dollar economy on just applications like Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and Periscope and Blipper and, and the list goes on where entire business models are based on people sharing photos. So photos are worth a thousand words. It's a, it's a big reality of our life. Even the world's biggest company like Apple, their entire marketing campaign is uh, shot on iPhone 6. That's philosophy number one. It's important to keep it in mind. Number two is our version of what we call Internet on Things. Today, you might think that in the world of media, television is media, outdoor is media, press is media, internet is media, but have you ever given it a thought that the biggest media in the world is actually everything you see? Like these chairs in front of you, the screens, the products you consume, if you took every man-made product out of the planet, the world would be a very green or a gray place. So everything we visually interact with could be a media. And what we are trying to estimate here, that in the world of computer vision and artificial intelligence, there will be a point where we will be able to look at anything uh, and engage with it, which our definition is internet on things rather than internet of things. And the last, the last philosophy is words are not enough. Today, uh, the primary gateway for information access is, is the traditional search engines. And it's funny to call the search engines traditional, but they've been around for a long, long time. Uh, and it totally depends on your perception of the question and the keywords you use. But let's not forget that one-seventh of the world uh, can't even read and write. Uh, another two-seventh of the world has very basic literacy, like alphabetical or numeric literacy, but they're not, they're not educated, they're not reading novels. So three-seventh of the world is already alienated from the world of search engines. The remainder of four-seventh, where people like you and me belong, like high school dropouts to triple PhDs, we do not speak more than 10% vocabulary in any given native language. So even though we heavily rely on the world of curiosity or on the world of words, words are not enough to describe several, several things which we look at. And I can give you examples like plants and outfits and paintings, and you come across so many things every day which you don't know what to type in a Google or a Yahoo to wanting to know more. These three philosophies was important to cover because it lends very cleanly towards the next part of the debate that how and where the world is heading and how can the majority of the planet actually access information from the world we see. Two concepts are paramount to take this leap forward. One is computer vision. So when a computer looks at things, it actually alienates and creates categories and structure. 
So this is an example image from our labs where a computer is looking at an environment and is trying to isolate the cattle from the grass from the building. It doesn't have, it doesn't have intelligence, but it has just basic cognition, as you can see uh, from the image here. But the next thing which makes that computer vision smarter is uh, artificial intelligence, which is driven by machine learning. So machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, artificial intelligence, these are the buzzwords you're going to hear so much for the next 10 to 20 years, as you heard e-commerce and SSL pages and HTTP and secure socket layer, etc. Those were the iconic words which dominated last 15, 18 years of formative years of the internet. But the next generation of internet is massively going to be driven by programs, self-learning. So machine learning is actually a subset of the bigger concept of uh, artificial intelligence, which actually allows computer algorithms to autonomously study data and information and take decisions. Sometimes, actually, it can go out of control where you can set a parameter and you can write an algorithm, but the algorithm gets automatically smarter over a period of time. But it's nowhere reach, reach the stage where doomsday is coming and machines are going to take over the world. There are a lot of scary thoughts and debates going on, but right now, for the next 25 to 30 years, it will only aid a lot of human interactions and human decision making. So you, you understood what computer vision means, and you understood what machine learning means, but how does it really benefit the world? Today, the world population is around 7 billion people. And um, it's going to be around 10 billion people in another 35 years. There'll be a huge resource crunch. You know, there isn't enough anyway space left for people or land or knowledge or doctors. There are several gaps today which human resources are already struggling to fill. But how are we going to cope with 10 billion people on the planet when only 50 years ago there were only 2 billion people? So here's the answers, but before we ask the answers, I'm going to raise certain questions. Agriculture. People do not know how to repeat, use, or farm their land more efficiently, again, because a lot of poor people are connected with agriculture. General education. You know, there's a big gap in what teachers are teaching and what students are learning, but number of students are going up, and education solutions today aren't scalable. Flow of traffic, I mean, you're already seeing that's why autonomous cars coming into play. There is so much congestion that Bangalore is a great example. There is no infrastructure policy that in the next 10, 20 years, automatically roads are going to be created. No. But people are buying cars and metros are coming into play. But you can already see the growth at which population is happening. The supply of infrastructure is unsustainable. The governments haven't woken up to this. Crime and terrorism, you know, it's, it's a major issue. No one talks about it, at least in these events. But it's a harsh reality of life that surveillance, how can we predict crime, is a major issue. Actually, kids uh, learning disabilities, not just education, stress, and kids, how do they take so much information and understand? Because growing up 20 years ago and growing up today are it's very different challenges. Medi medical science, you know, the gap today is, in America alone, uh, one doctor to the ratio of 19,000 patients. This was 1 is to 7,000 a few years ago. So there is a tremendous gap on diagnosis, health diagnosis, which, which could be resolved. And the list goes on, energy efficiency, crowd flow management, etc., garbage management, and R&D. So we believe that computer vision and AI could be a very, very strong contributor to solve many of these issues. Imagine a world where 95% of illnesses we go, to, we go to doctors or hospitals for are actually diagnostic-led. You can very easily 
figure out, like what, what job of a radiologist or a job of a compounder, very easily you can figure out a rash, what is it for? You don't need a doctor to study that rash and anyway ask you to uh, recommend you to a certain medicine from a, from a nearest pharmacy. All these processes could happen automatically. Internet on things. Today you already have 8 billion phones in your hands. People could be, even the uneducated people could be empowered, especially from the age of one to five, which are very important years for a kid's life. You could literally look at anything in the world and the world could talk back to you. You don't need to ask your grandfather or mother or parents who are working. Instead of playing games on the phone, you could just go around the world. And we've done tests where we found kids learning way richer vocabulary than what their parents could have uh, taught them. Also, agriculture-based solutions where farmers could be given devices or even robots, very cheap robots costing like $20, $30, which can give them day-to-day -day advice on how to irrigate their land or how to predict uh, weather predictions, uh, etc. Surveillance, there's so much video coming through CCTV and all sources of security system, but it's still manually looked by people. There's not enough human resources to manually look at all those videos. You can real time predict that whether a riot is gonna happen in an area or a crime's gonna happen in an area or a terrorist activity could happen. So computer vision and artificial intelligence is one of the key drivers in 21st century to bridge the gap between human resources and leading macro problems the world is facing. So uh, besides that, uh, what I wanted to do is, uh, is uh, give you guys a demonstration uh, of the technology, uh, how it works. Uh, and if you're lucky, because there's a very high probability it may not work because I have to use uh, a Wi-Fi connection. So let's give it a go uh, and let me know what you guys think, yeah? So I'm going to plug my phone in um, onto the screen. Could I move into the demo mode, please? If you are, if you are using Wi-Fi, please try and move to the airplane mode because it'll help me. And so when you, when you open this browser, with machine learning, it starts analyzing the environment in real time. This is not image recognition. I have never seen this crowd before. I've never been into this auditorium. And yet, it'll start analyzing in this environment and start predicting what's out there. And if there's no words appearing yet, because I'm not getting a connection, there you go. So uh, we'll, we'll, I'll give it a go for another one minute or two. Let me see what connection I'm on. OK. Let's see. As I said, it's, it's completely your luck whether it's happening or not. Um, I, would have, I would have loved to uh, show your demonstration. So look what the words beginning to appear in the background, which again stopped. Uh, it, it was trying to say that we are in an auditorium. This could be a concert. So today, this visual browser has the brain and cognition of a six-year-old. It can understand. 70 to 80% of things you see in the world, but it cannot go down to the depth of an 18-year-old. So it can know this is a plastic chair, this is a stage, this is a screen, that is a car, that's an onion, that's a salad, but it may not be able to tell you that's a Toyota Prius or this chair is from Ikea or your jeans is from Levi's. So when I start, when I start putting out things, odd things like that, I actually brought my lunch from Speaker's Lounge. To, to give you guys a demo. So if I, if I pointed at uh, th this random plate over here, it recognized the potato, uh, then it p recognized the lettuce, the salad, the cabbage, uh, probably the rice as well. Uh, and this is all happening real time on a very low, very low connection. And you can, of course, click on any of these, and it'll give you more information about where you can buy it, how you can quick it, all, all the curiosity questions you might have above those. And you can see it just continuously analyzing. This is just one little plate which I brought for lunch. But if I go down, go down to more specifics and I pick up this chocolate bar over here, it should be able to say that um, this is a chocolate. I've got some other stuff like fruits. 
Um, I cannot, uh, okay. Guys, I'm running out of time, but you guys get the idea that how already artificial intelligence and machine learning is a reality. And today, machines are able to look at the world and analyze it for you almost like a real human being. Thank you.